I don't understand why Max comes when I call him, follows commands, and basically lives at my pleasure. He's a good boy. My cat, on the other hand, practically ignores me unless I fill her bowl with tuna or she decides she wants some occasional petting. It's like I exist for her pleasure. I love her, but I don't control her. So, I was surprised to discover that we didn't just domesticate cats 10,000 years ago we did it twice. I can't get her to do anything even once. How did we convince these finicky cats to live with us? We didn't. It was probably their idea. Despite the fact that cats were domesticated from the word home, meaning the animal began to live with us and depend on us, it's more accurate to say they domesticated themselves. Dogs may have been the first to do so. Dogs, or their wolf ancestors, became fond of us when we started hunting and cooking over fire. They hung around, begged for scraps, and Max still does that today. Okay, hold on to that. Dogs allowed themselves to be trained to help us hunt and even watch over herds of domestic animals like sheep. Cats also hung around the campfires, but they weren't interested in helping us hunt or herd. All attempts to train them failed miserably, despite cats sharing our tastes. They loved the same rabbits, but humans didn't need an animal whose main skill was sunbathing and lounging in caves. I'm not talking about afternoon tea here I mean the agricultural revolution. We started growing grains and other crops, and when there was surplus from the harvest, we stored it. That's when we could say we domesticated rats and mice. Although nobody would say it that way, because even though the mice had moved in, becoming dependent on us, we hated them. It wasn't their looks they were just terrible neighbors. They ate all our grain, left a mess, and brought diseases. Plus, their bald tails freaked out our ancestors. Chasing them was useless they were very hard to catch. That's when we started trying to invent mousetraps. That's when you finally found your place in the human world. Cats love mice. They adore them, which explains a lot in our relationship with them. We may have disagreements for example, when a cat wants to go out, then come in, then out again, but we get along because there's no mousetrap better than a cat. When people stored grain, rats and mice showed up, and then cats came to catch them. Soon, people started persuading cats to stay, maybe not offering them the best spot by the fire, but not forbidding them either. Did you ever try to argue with a cat? Maybe even built a couple of temples for them? If you still doubt who's in charge here, remember that the Egyptians revered the cat goddess Batet, so who's the boss? Even the Romans, though not worshipping cats, used them as a symbol of freedom. In other words, you can be a master to a dog, but a cat is just a freelancer. That's not the only difference. Dogs, for example, have come a long way from their wolf ancestors. It's hard to believe there's a connection, but compare a domestic cat or a Maine Coon with its ancestor, Felis Silvestris, also known as the wildcat. People who study them will say today's domestic cats are nothing like Felis Silvestris. But I disagree. Sure, they're a bit smaller and much friendlier, but the biggest difference, which excites scientists, lies in the stripes. And to me, they seem surprisingly similar. Okay, I admit it, I constantly mix up blankets, can't find a matching pair of socks, and I'm not a scientist. But to me, the most astonishing thing about domestic cats and their ancestors is their resemblance. It explains why we know so little about the early interactions between cats and humans. The genetic appearance of today's cats is practically identical to that of their wild ancestors, and one of the few ways to distinguish them is their fur pattern, which usually doesn't survive until archaeological excavations. Domestic cats come in various colors, ginger, black, white, some even have spots, but what you won't find on a domestic cat, except for two exceptions, more on that later, are leopard spots. 
Even the variations we have today only emerged when breeders in the 1800s deliberately sought them out. Before that, cats were almost untouched. By that time, dogs had long been recognized by distinct breeds because they had been bred for specific tasks, fighting, herding, pulling sleds. But cats excelled in one thing, catching mice, except maybe they lacked spots. Today's domestic cats, like the Maine Coon and the Abyssinian, are not related to leopards. So breeders dreaming of cats with spots crossed these breeds with others until they produced spotted offspring with varying degrees of success, resulting in breeds like the Savannah and the Bengal. There's debate over how good of a pet they make keeping them isn't legal everywhere, and they might not be happy living indoors. It's better to get yourself a Maine Coon, which you can find anywhere, or maybe one will come to you. They often refuse to leave, like how Sam tamed me. But there was a time when spotted cats decided to live with us. Remember, cats domesticate themselves, so it makes sense that if we're growing grain and attracting mice, we're lucky that cats show up. Until recently, scientists believed they were always breeds like the Maine Coon, but recent excavations in the village of Jiahu in central China showed that 5,000 years ago, Chinese farmers were content with their own cats. Unlike the Maine Coon, these cats were descended from leopard cats, like the artificially bred Bengals. They had spots. And although the Chinese didn't start worshipping cat deities, the excavations showed they cared for their spotted friends, even though the cats caught rodents. Farmers still fed them. Archaeologists even found a whole Jiahu cat buried so carefully that its skeleton remained intact for thousands of years. This proves that someone held the animal dear. So what happened to these technical cats? No one knows for sure. Cats have always been a mystery. Some believe that with the advent of trade, farmers learned about Maine Coons and chased the shadow of leopard cats in favor of today's domestic cats. Maybe spots were in vogue. But if you've ever heard the song The Cat Came Back, you know they're not easy to get rid of, though sometimes cats venture out on their own to roam free. It's called going feral. You've probably encountered them, stray cats living on the streets. I tend to agree with scientists who think that once a domestic cat or cat breeds start associating with humans for some reason, it means they've taken a step closer to the wild animals we're familiar with. Today, cats are the most popular pets in the world. There are about 75 million beloved cats just in the United States, and these magnificent hunters consider us cool and decide to live with us. Well, I'm flattered. If you learned something new today, give this video a like and share it with a friend.